Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we have a first impression, really an early impression because I've been wearing it now for about five hours uh, this evening. I just did a fresh spray and I've got about a five hour dry down of a brand new fragrance that actually just came out in 2023. And shout out to my buddy, Mike, Mike V from the streams. Uh, so I have been doing more streams lately because that's what the people have been demanding. So instead of just doing videos of lists or, you know, reviews or whatever, I've just been streaming and just kind of rambling and talking about fragrances with the people, which I enjoy the back and forth. It does make the videos a little bit longer because you read the comments, you interact with, with uh, everyone in the streams but I've been really enjoying it. And Mike V asked if uh, anyone has reviewed the new zoologist, which is called Harvest Mouse. And so I said, hey, I have a sample, might as well, right? Let's talk about it because maybe there's not very many reviews on YouTube about it, as you can see, and it's an extra de parfum. And here's the little samples that uh, Victor Wong uses. I must say that uh, this was very kindly sent to me by Victor Wong. Uh, so shout out to Victor Wong as well. Thank you for sending this to me. Uh, the fact that it was sent to me by the brand though, of course, doesn't change the fact that all opinions are my own. Uh, and the reason that I was pausing at the beginning when I was saying hello is that I was holding this and you may be able to see, but, uh, this right here, I just put this on before the video because I wanted to smell it again. This is a actual absolute of hay. So this is Hay Absolute. And the reason that I wanted to bring this out again is I wanted to remind myself of what Hay Absolute smells like. Because Hay Absolute actually pay, plays a very important role in Harvest Mouse. And if you take a look at the um, artwork, you can actually see, you won't see any hay, but you will see wheat. There's a piece of wheat in his mouth, like an old school southern boy sitting on his rocker, you know, down in Texas where I'm at with his wheat in his mouth. Uh, and if you look at the bottle, the artwork on the bottle has a little bit more detail than the um, sample. And there's some like wheat in the background as well. So, you know, I love the artwork of Zoologist, by the way. He looks like, um, he looks like a, you know, man that lived in the 1920s during the Great Depression, right? Just out on his farm, hard working man. Uh, I love the artworks. So um, let's talk about the scent uh, and let's read the blurb. I love reading the blurb. Uh, the blurb is always a good way to gain insight into what the brand thinks of the scent and, you know, what they want to convey and that kind of stuff. So let's go to zoologist.com and let's go to Harvest Mouse and let us... Oh, wait a minute. It's not zoologist.com, is it? Uh, what's the website? Zoologist, uh, perfumes.com. Apologies. Uh, zoologistperfumes.com. So Harvest Mouse. Let's see if we can find Harvest Mouse. Oh no, they're not. Uh... Ah, here we go. Harvest Mouse. It says, Autumn winds skip across golden wheat fields as the tall grasses billow the rattle of husks beat a soft prairie lullaby signaling to the weary sun to rest in the fading light tiny harvest mice venture forth scrambling to gather seeds and fruits for once the sun sinks fully beneath the horizon its rule of the sky is bestowed on another and when the coo of the owl breaks the night, the mice dash, trembling, back to their nests. Like a countryside bathed in sweet sunlight, zoologist Harvest Mouth con Harvest Mouse, sorry, it's midnight, uh, conjures images of home-baked goodness. Stalks of wheat sway amongst chamomile, divana, and hay, and rich beer extracts are sobered by resins and woody notes, Cozy up in a warm nest of homespun scent, uh, which also gives me that 1920s feel. Cozy up in a nest of warm spun scent. Um, so here's the little picture on the inside. You can again see that wheat imagery. Um, 
and I mentioned hay earlier. So you're kind of picking up what I'm putting down, right? Uh, so here is the perfumer's name, by the way. He's a perfumer that's gotten a lot of traction recently. I think he's a newer up and coming perfumer, I think, because I've seen his name more and more in the last couple years than I ever have before. But his name is Luca Mafai, and he's gotten a lot of notoriety. I've seen him do a lot of, you know, uh, one-offs for brands here and there, and, and this is one such perfume. Um, so here's the notes. Top notes. Bergamot, cloves, Roman chamomile, Roman, orange blossom, Divana Apopanax, hay absolute, rose absolute, beer extract CO2, very interesting note, Benzoin base of uh, fur, and that was the heart, by the way, base of fur balsam, cedar wood, oak moss, sandalwood, peru balsam, and vanilla. Okay, so um, here's the thing, is that note listing sounds extremely unique, although the smell is not extremely unique, and I don't know why. That's the thing. I'm not 100% sure why. Um, so the opening uh, is very strange because it's very familiar in a way. It has a slight bit of sweetness to it. My wife actually really liked this fragrance. Um, and she um, she also didn't really know why. She never does, but I can tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of, um, it reminds me of designer takes on Oud, okay? I don't know why. Again, the note listing has, it makes no sense uh, because there's no oud note listed, but there are two fragrances that popped to my head as soon as I smelled this for the very first time. One is Versace Pour Homme's Oud Noir, okay? This is one. And the other fragrance that it reminds me of, and it's remi it reminds me a little bit more of this in the opening than the dry down. Actually, even the dry down, it sort of reminds me of this. So these are two good representations, and I honestly, I don't know why. I, I would love to hear other reviews on this, but this is my take on it. And, I mean, I just have to be honest with you guys. Uh, MFK's Oud, the Eau de Parfum. And I should be using my Less Abstraits uh, microfiber cloth to make sure there are no fingerprints on here. I'm slacking. Uh, January 24th, Desandres comes out. I hope you guys are excited about that, by the way. Speaking of 2023 releases. Um, so MFK's Oud has this um, heavy saffron Oud combination, of course, um, with these ambery notes, okay? Maybe it's the ambery notes because both of these uh, Versace Pour Homme Oud Noir, which many consider as like a cheapy, but I think it's a very good just designer oud, you know? This is the reason I'm not going to buy another bottle of uh, Tom Ford's oud wood. When I run out, I'll just wear this. I really enjoy it. Um, you know, it's got that cardamom and spice and, and that designer Norlimbanol oud. Um, and as the minutes tick by, you begin to get this Divana note. Now, Divana is a very interesting note because it is multifaceted. And... Um, Many times it comes across as having this sweet tea-like smell. And, you know, this fragrance does, excuse me, this fragrance does evolve a little bit, but um, the overall, like, core of the scent remains the same, if that makes sense. It's not like transitions where it goes from smelling like one thing to smelling like something completely different. No, the, um, the fragrance remains at its core what it is. And if I smelled this blindfolded, I would probably say this is an oud scent with a ton of saffron. There's no oud and there's no saffron. So that's what makes this so strange for me. This is a very strange fragrance. Because normally when you've smelled as many perfumes as I have, you have you come to kind of understand, you know, very little surprises you, if that makes sense. Um, you can You can usually wrap your brain around what you're smelling and put your finger on it in one wear. And I feel like I can do that, it's just the finger I'm putting on it is wrong, according to the note listing. Um, but Divana, being this multifaceted scent, I think does a couple things. It adds a little bit of sweetness. Uh, tea, imagine you're smelling dry tea, like the tea before it's brewed. Um, 
and you ever kind of have tea that you're supposed to use by a certain date and you let it expire and it kind of gets brittle and frail and you touch it and it breaks apart that's the um that's the tea like vibe that the divana gives me in this fragrance and there are some um there are some um I would say combinations that go well together, some connections in this fragrance that fit very well together that are very interesting to me. Um, so uh, the, uh, the, the connection to this Norlimbinol Oud, where it's coming from, I have no idea. Um, it just, I, I can't figure that part out. But what I can figure out is that tea, that brittle tea, and the hay absolute because there is a note of hay absolute in the heart uh, and the divana and the hay absolute are uh, just natural bedfellows they just work very well together because hay absolute which again this is proper this is true hay absolute shout out to russian adam from uh ariz ladore for sending me these these are so great as a you know um, somebody who's trying to learn more about perfumes, there's no better way than to smell the actual ingredients themselves. And when I smell Hey Absolute, uh, there's a couple things that are immediately jump out to me. Number one, one of the most overriding smells that my memory keeps going back to is when I was a kid, my old man used to smoke. And remember cigarettes used to have that, um, that plastic wrapper over the top of it like you had to rip the you had to rip that little thing around the outside and you had to take the plastic off the top and then when you opened up the pack of cigarettes there was a piece of silver foil usually or gold foil around the cigarettes themselves and you had to pull that out before you could actually get to the cigarette right and that gold foil piece inside of the pack of cigarettes if you've ever you know, had parents who smoked, or if you ever smoked, or had friends who smoked, if they, sometimes they'll just take that piece of foil and throw it, right? Just throw it on the table or something, because they want to get to the cigarettes. And if you ever pick that up and just smell it, that's what the hay absolute smells like to me. It's very dry. It smells like dry tobacco. Um, maybe like, um, maybe like hints of if imagine you like mowed your yard in the middle of winter when the grass is dead, right? And you kind of piled it all together and it had this um this dead, crinkly grass like smell. That that mixed in there as well. But the hay absolute, interestingly enough, um uh the hay absolute, and and by the way, I did a video a week or two ago on tuberose and um I, this is my tuberose blotter from, from the actual dark tuberose that uh, Russian Adam sent me. I can still smell this weeks, a week or two later. I don't remember exactly how long. It is unbelievable how long these actual ingredients... You know, I sprayed Terre de Hermes on, on, on one of these blotters uh, a couple days after this, and it was gone. It was gone in a day or two. And I can still smell the tuberose. Just random... Um, observation as to how strong these just individual ingredients are but look how thick the hay absolute is look at this I put this on before the video it's like a thick dark resin right and it smells amazing it's sm but it's perfect for this idea uh, this whole field mouse idea which I'm not the biggest fan of but we'll get to that later um, <laughs> But it's perfect as far as the idea goes because it gives the impression of really being out the field. You know, you think about mice, you think about being on a being on a, a farm in the 1920s and 30s, um, you know, and, and maybe hard times and you have to live off of the land. And, you know, you think about looking out at that field and you think about mice being in the field, harvest mice, how, harvest mouse. So it, it fits, okay? The hay absolute... Uh, and the tea absolute really seem to blend together beautifully. They're great bedfellows, let's say. They make they make the scent to me along with one other note, and that other note is beer. Uh, what did they say? Beer CO2. Yeah, beer extract CO2, which I've never seen that note in perfumery before. I've seen wine, I've seen champagne, I've never seen beer. 
Um, and you know what the beer in this fragrance reminds me of? When I was still a drinking man, which for the most part I've given that up, other than like New Year's Eve or something, I don't really drink anymore. Um, and, but when I was a drinking man, there was uh, maybe like 10 or 15 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago it started. Uh, I haven't seen them in the stores lately, but then again, I don't look very hard. Uh, but Budweiser used to sell these Bud Light Wheat or Budweiser Wheat or something like that. I don't know if they still do, but I used to love those. I used to love that wheat beer. Uh, and it had like a little bit more of a malty smell to it, like a weedy, malty, uh, barley smell. Um, and and it just seemed a little denser, a little thicker, you know. Uh, and that's what the, it's almost like smelling hops, you know. I imagine, you ever see those Budweiser commercials where they take the, where they take the, um, you know, nose, I don't know if they call them a nose, but the master brewer of beer at, and he's like putting his hands in the bar, in the, in, in the bar, in the bar, is it barley? I don't, I don't even know. Uh, and, but he's putting his hands in there and he's like shoving it to his face and smelling the hops, right? And like, and like crinkling them and trying to smell it. And they're trying to show what high quality beer Budweiser is. Um, but that is the smell that it kind of gives me. And yet... Even though I'm reading those notes, my brain is reading the perfume as a rose, I'm sorry, not rose, as a oud saffron fragrance. That's the way it's reading this. So I'm reading the notes, and when I read the notes and I smell it, okay, I can see the beer, I can see the bar, the the uh, hops, um, you know, I can see that wheat, I can see the hay absolute, right? I can see all that. The hay absolute in here, uh... I mean, when you smell one and then you smell the other, it makes sense that there's definitely hay absolute in here, but here it's so much more sharper and strong and, and you know, bold and much more tobacco-like. Here, it feels like they tried to tone down some of the tobacco qualities a little bit and try to make it feel more like you're really smelling wheat. Um, and, you know, uh, when I look at the note listing and I smell it, I can trick my brain into thinking that, I'm okay, I'm smelling beer and I'm smelling... Uh, wheat, or I'm smelling Hay Absolute and Divana and all this stuff. There is rose in here, so maybe that's why I get this rose oud saffron thing. There is a rose absolute in here. Okay, um, and then the dry down is benzoin, fir balsam, cedar wood, oak moss, sandalwood, peru balsam, and vanilla. Um, and you know, the dry down seems very competent. Um, it seems very competent to me. And, you know, what ends up happening, though, uh, as the hours begin to tick by, and even though it stays in that DNA, um, here's where I think Devana kind of plays its chameleon trick. Because Bertrand Duchefort, known as the magician, master of using incense and Devana in a perfume. And I've got to know Devana very well, thanks to Bertrand Duchefort's compositions. But Luca Maffei uses it here, and it feels like, or my guess is, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing that Devana is what's giving it this aspect where it's like slightly shifting, you know? Um, it has this like slightly shifting aspect. It's still centered. The fragrance is still what it is at its heart, at its core, but it just kind of, like the earth kind of rotates on its axis, right? That's what this fragrance feels like. There's just slight rotations um, and the Devana note actually begins to smell, um, green. It has a slight green aspect to it. Uh, almost like you're witnessing the field go from dead to alive, right? Um, and, um, so more and more of the hay absolute and the beer start to come to the forefront. And the Devana begins to release more and more of this green attribute is what it feels like. And it, it kind of tricked me up a little bit. So um, I did a little bit more research into Devana. And apparently Devana is a member of the silver-leafed Artemisia family, which, you know, I didn't even know there was a silver-leafed Artemisia family. I'm not a perfumer, um, but uh, I do know Artemisia. 
but the silver-leafed Artemisia family is very distinct. Apparently, it's native to India, and whenever it's distilled, it has that sweet tea-like smell. But it also has green. It also has that um, green Artemisia-like odor. Okay, so it kind of can play chameleon tricks on you. Um, and you get multifaceted aspects of the Divana, is my guess. That's my guess. If I had to guess what's giving it that wobble, that, that would be my guess. Um, and some people also say that Divana can smell like a fine, fruity uh, dessert wine. Okay? So, slight fruity nuances, slight green nuances, lots of... Uh, sweet tea nuances uh, with that hay absolute that can sometimes feel like tobacco, uh, which I love tobacco. Um, and, you know, this, um, this, uh, this dancing partner idea kept popping back into my head. How, mo how the way that Luca Mafai kind of built this is some of the notes like are just natural partners. They team up and they dance together for a little bit. And then other notes team up and dance together for a little bit. Uh, and so the wine like Divana and beer were two notes that kind of popped into my head. Wine and beer obviously make normal bedfellows. The hay absolute and the wheat association um, are two other kind of notes that popped into my head. The hay with that brittle tea that I was talking about in the beginning that Devana can kind of smell like, like old tea that's past its prime and it's very brittle and, but it still has that smell, right? If you stick your head in the tea bag or in the loose tea, you know, it's, it's got that, it's got that tea vibe, right? Um, and it really feels like the artist uh, depicted it pretty well in this picture. You know, it's a pretty decent depiction of, of what the scent you're getting. Um, you know, beer is more of the working man's alcohol, right? Uh, and, you know, look, he's wearing that working man's outfit from back in the day. Uh, and so this doesn't feel like an elitist scent. It feels like an everyman scent. I think that um, this hoppy, barley, weedy aspect might appeal more towards men. At least for me, it reminds me of my college days drinking Bud Light wheat. If anyone else remembers that, uh, let me know. I had a lot of long nights drinking that stuff. Uh, and it, it felt like drinking a glass of bread, too. It would just plop into your stomach, but it tasted so good. Um, and it does give off that mar malty, wheaty, wheaty smell. So, um, you know, I the, the only thing about this scent, and I was thinking here, you know, thinking about this, like, Harvest Mouse, okay? Like, does this scent, um, does this, you know, name and idea, does this inspire you to want to go out and buy this? You know, I mean, I know zoologists, um, they kind of pride itself on um, trying to go off the beaten path. Like, they don't want to do just the, just the animals that make the most sense, right? There are many animals that I would say um, are probably the most common that people would maybe look for that are missing in the zoologist stable. They like doing these weird, off the beaten path, strange animals that you wouldn't expect. And I get that. That's like a DNA of the brand, but I almost feel like they might have jumped the shark here. Like Harvest Mouse, I mean, aren't there better animals that you could have kind of done here that inspired more confidence? Like, you know, when with the Aventus thing that took off so well in 2010, you know, and Napoleon on his horse and all of this stuff. And, you know, it, it and just the name Aventus. I mean, there's some power there. There's something, you know, um, and I just can't help but think how many people are really going to like, what are you wearing? Harvest Mouse. You know, it's a mouse is timid and weak and sk even in the blurb, it's like, you know, when the night breaks, the mouse, the mice dash, trembling back to their nest. Do I want to wear an animal that's trembling and afraid? Or do I want to wear the animal that's doing the attacking? You know, um, I, I know it's a small piece of the puzzle, but all of it matters. You know, the name, the marketing, the all of it, all of it matters. It all comes together. And so while I like the scent, uh, I'm not a big fan of the marketing of this scent. 
Um, I think they maybe should knock out some of those animals that are just common. I mean, they haven't done panther or tiger or lion or, I mean, you know, hyena. I mean, pick one, you know, pick one of those four I just listed and do it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it knock out some of the common ones that people, you know, feel like maybe give them a little bit of power. I mean, who wouldn't want to wear lion? I mean, uh, Chanel hopped all over that with Le Leon, but there's still a place for a zoologist lion or saber tooth. You want to do something different? Do saber tooth. Do something. I mean, you know, again, I know I'm kind of uh, on my soapbox here, and that's not what this is. This review is about. It's about the. It's about the perfume. It's about the liquid inside. the The most important thing is the perfume itself, uh, not the packaging, not the marketing, not the name. Just forget all that and just focus on what the perfume is like. Um, and I think the perfume is good. However, however, I can't help but feel that for someone like me who, um, you know, someone like me that has these, that, uh, that already owns these Oud fragrances, uh, that maybe owning Harvest Mouse would be a little bit redundant. That's, that's my feel. Uh, I would love to know, because this is a new release, so many people probably haven't gotten their nose on it yet, but I would love to know if um, anyone else gets this weird Oud, Rose, Saffron combination from Harvest Mouse, or if it's just, you know, me. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I swear it smells like there's Saffron in here. It smells like there's that Norlimbinol Oud. Um, and... You know, I would love to know if other people are getting that as well, but that's pretty much my early impression on it. I think it's a good fragrance. I think it's well made. Uh, I think that you could wear this and definitely enjoy wearing it. It seems like the longevity is pretty good. It's an extra de parfum. Um, you know, this is four and a half hours or whatever it is, five hours in, and I'm and I can still smell it clear as day. Uh, the um, the fresh spray that I did before the, um, I don't get very much cloves though. That's the only thing. The clove note is either very well blended and very slight. And to be fair, cloves can be overpowering, but maybe I do get a little bit of that chamomile orange blossom thing in the opening. Um, chamomile can also be a tea. Speaking of Devana and that tea-like smell. So can't, so speaking of partners kind of blending together, chamomile can also be a tea, a very relaxing tea. Maybe you just imagine uh, the harvest mouse having a rough day uh, at the at the at the um, fields at the office and just kind of putting his feet up on the porch, putting his boots up and relaxing with some chamomile tea. I, I don't know, but that oud rose saffron con uh, connotation will not go away. It does not leave. It's 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 there. It's, it's, it's in my brain as clear as if I was smelling, you know, MFK's Oud. Um, and so for me, since I own this, I would just wear this. I mean, I think they would do the same thing for me, even though they get there in different avenues, let's say, or even this, or I'd kill off my bottle of Tom Ford Oud wood, or I have so many of these Oud, these Oud fragrances. I mean, you know, um, that I would probably just wear these and not buy a bottle of Harvest Mouse. But I do have to say thank you very much to Victor Wong for sending this to me uh, for review. I hope you think I did it justice. Um, and I would love to hear your thoughts and the feedback. You know, I've got a ton of zoologist. Um, I've got like three of these to do. And each one is, you know, an animal. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of early impressions on zoologist fragrances very soon. Nightingale, Dragonfly, Moth, which I have a bottle of, Musk Deer, Panda, Squid, Seahorse, and then even the vintage of uh, Rhinoceros, the old, the vintage. I'm going to do a comparison with the new Rhinoceros. So I have a lot of uh, zoologist content to get to. So um, if you guys have smelled Harvest Mouse, I would love to hear your opinions, your thoughts, um, you know, your feedback. Do leave a comment below, or even if you're just, I guess, excited to smell Harvest Mouse. Leave your comment below. If there are other zoologists that you are interested in learning more about, let me know. I'll, I'll accommodate as much as I can. But I mean, I plan on doing all of them and there's like three of these sleeves. So it's a lot of early impression videos. 
but it's fun. I've, I've enjoyed kind of, I have a good, I think I have a good system down now. You know, I wear my scent of the day usually that I really like, and then at night I can kind of test these that I want to test. Then I don't have to wear, waste a full scent of the day wearing on something I may or may not like. Uh, this one, even though I do like it, I just think it just leans too much to that rose oud saffron thing in my brain. I don't know why. Um, it may be Luca Mafai used some, you know, um, maybe he used some molecules that share some commonality with rose oud saffron fragrances. I have no clue. But um, the uh, getting to smell the hay absolute and smelling it in the fragrance was really awesome. So special shout out to Russian Adam for, you know, sending these to me in 2022. This has changed the way I smell perfume. It's such a blessing. Um, so thank you, everybody. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great evening, and I'll see you again next time. Bye now.